come up and have a few words. Um, our lead presenter, presenter is Moreni Kayajai of Career Nuggets. Moreni Kayajai is a senior finance executive and a broadcaster. Her passion is helping people within the black community to progress to their chosen careers. She is the founder of Career Nuggets, including Career Nuggets TV at www.careernuggets.tv where she shares useful tips on career development and progression. Morenika is a recipient of numerous awards in recognition for her work in the black community. Without further ado, I present to you Morenika. I got here late. Um, it's a new area for me. <laughs> but there's a lot of traffic. Yeah, well, like I've been introduced, I'm Rani Kajai and I'm an accountant. And I'm quite passionate about um, you know, our community, the black community in the area of career development. And most importantly, what's, what's really driving me is that I see a lot of black um, people, particularly you know, from African community, have, they have a lot of qualifications. I don't want to stop your meal, so please eat while I'm talking. Um, you know, people have a lot of qualifications, but I don't see them working in the same position commensurate to those qualifications. And, and sometimes people are doing a very good job, but they're not rewarded for it. And I just felt, I, so I, I did some research, and I noticed that the same issues are not really common in the Asian community per se. And what I notice is that they support each other and they pull each other up the ladder. It's not just one, you know, when you're up there and then you remove the ladder, it's about leaving the ladder there for others to grow. But most importantly for me, it's actually our young adults. Um, and, and for me to explain that, I want to give you a little bit of an insight into my own upbringing. And then probably you'll get a feel for where I'm going. So I was born in Wales and you, you just, no, 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 go on, go on. No, that light is getting into my eyes. So when you were standing there, I was better. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was born in Wales, and when I was about 18 months, my dad decided, I'm sure maybe some of you might be able to connect with this or identify with what I'm about to say. He decided to go back to Nigeria when I was 18 months to, you know, he was up at some just cousin and all that. I think, I don't know what happened around that year. But anyway, that was the last we heard of him. So it meant that my mom was left to raise me, and she was pregnant with my sister. So when I was about nine, she felt very lonely. She decided to go back to Nigeria. But instead of going to a place that looked like Wales, she took us to a very remote place in Ibadan. Extremely remote, because to get water, I had to go to the stream to fetch water on my head. So I had to scrape the water, I would have to cook with um, all sorts of things. I had to, basically, I had to fend at a very early age. You know, I had to get independent. I had to build some resilience. Education was key for her, so she coached me at home, and I got into a federal school, which is a very good school. But I faced some um, challenges in the sense that where I was coming from, with the people that I was mingling with in the federal school, so there's a lot of complex that I had to deal with. But along this line, what all this was teaching me was how to be resilient, was how to, you know, be strong and fight for myself. So when I finished from university, I came back here, even though because of all the struggles I had with my identity, so to say, I didn't really flourish that much. So I finished with a second class lower. But nevertheless, coming here, because of all the resilience that had been built in me, I was determined to make something of my career. And I'm quite happy where I am at the moment. Um, <clears throat> So there were some hurdles I overcame. I got on, on a graduate trainee scheme despite all odds. Um, I was able to, and to get that, one of the things I did was I found the chief executive of the company. I, you know, I won't go into the details, but I relayed him basically, and he had no choice than to give me the job. I started my career that way. I've worked in PricewaterhouseCoopers, Transport for London. You know, there's so many things, but what I'm saying is it was, it meant the only way I could do this, and I'll give you some, an example of the graduate trainee was, I got the interview, when I didn't get the job, I went back for feedback, but I was very determined to follow it through. Now I say all this that because of the upbringing I had, it's built some kind of um, strength in me to want to make something of my life. I've seen poverty, and I don't want that to continue. Blessed memory, both my parents are late now, I did make up with my dad eventually, but I'm able to stand and face what's out there. 
Now the marketplace is becoming tougher and tougher. There's a lot of um, things going on there that I'm a bit concerned for our kids. I feel they've grown up in a very sheltered environment. They're not as resilient as some of us have been to be able to fight and face and navigate that marketplace the way it is. And it means that there's certain things that they need apart from the academics. I think in the community we push them to go to good schools, to finish with good grades. I've come across some of them that have a first class and they're struggling to get a job. It shouldn't be the case. And the reason why I'm really talking about this is that I want us to engage them more and how we can do that. A lot of them need mentors from a very early age. They need to be prepared properly on how to integrate into the marketplace, how they can navigate the marketplace. And I know that you're all professionals here, so I'm trying to reach out to as many professionals as I can. So in Career Nuggets that I run, we have two events. One in May, it's called Meet Your Mentor. And we did our first one this year, in, sorry, in June. And we had 120 young adults and we had 40 professionals. And they met with them one-on-one -on -one and we follow through with them through the year. We do this voluntarily just to work, work with them and get them work experience, work placement, so they, they get used to the marketplace before they finish their degree. And those are the things we, we've had quite a lot of successes from doing that, but we need more professionals. At the moment, in the pack of people I have, and if you go on my website, you'll see some pictures of the mentors that we have. They're mainly accountants or IT or doctors. We need other professionals, and you might have those in your network. The more we have, the more we can equip our, our children. I need us to speak, to be a bit more vocal in our workplaces so that we can create these opportunities that the young ones really need, which means we don't just go to work, but we actually we, we get involved in what's going on in our workplace. Or if you're a business owner, give them room to come into your business and work so they can know how to you know, we, um, relate with other people so that they can have all these life skills that the university might not necessarily give them, which we've gone through life and we can explain to them what to do. I mean, I'm rushing off now because I have my annual event tomorrow, so there's so much planning going on and then, you know, it's for professionals like yourself, we're sold out this year because there's only 200 spaces, but it's basically saying the same message that people come and just give us a bit of your time. So I'm hoping that after I've gone, each one of you will volunteer your time and come and support us. Even if you can't come for the event, you can at least um, give your time and mentor some of these young ones that come through my TV show on Sky. So people see me on Sky, I'm on three times a week and I'm just interviewing professionals like yourself. So I get a lot of requests and I fund them out. Most importantly, I'd like to work with yourself, hopefully doing a, a young youth event within your um, NSF organization itself, whereby your children can come and I can bring the professionals that I have access to. All I'm looking at is in the next, a lot of things we're doing now is not necessarily for us, but it's to prepare the ground for our young one, and which is what the Asians did. We're kind of the first generation, but they're the second generation, and the first generation prepared the grounds, so things are much more easier for them. And it's also for us to understand the marketplace and know where we can take over. I'll give you an example. The hotel business, initially, the African community went into that. But we only did it like a stopgap, and we moved off. But we didn't follow it through to own that industry. Now, East Africa, the East Europeans have owned that industry now. You go into any hotel, they're the ones there. They, they're all there, all the way to the top. So there's something about understanding a particular industry and us owning it and owning it all the way to the top. So, because when we get to the top, that's the only way we can really make an influence. And I know in what I do, there's so many people that have given jobs just because my husband calls me racist the other way. If I see a particular name and they've applied, I will shortlist them. I get disappointed if they don't prove themselves. But if I, if they prove, if I see maybe 60%, I'm willing to give them that opportunity just to get you know, I just feel I'm there for a reason. And I do that, I, I network a lot. So it means that I have a lot of um, networks that I send people to. But that's just me. And I'm sure all of you have a lot of influence in where you're working or people you know. And so that we can make it easier for them because they're not as resilient as we are. From Because for me, the only reason why I'm like that is, you know, I'm, I'm a go-getter and I'll push any doors because of, I just don't want to suffer. I've seen suffer when I was growing up. But our kids are so shielded. I don't see a lot of them have seen anything like it and some of them I, I even give them opportunities go and do this work experience and it's like auntie what do I do what do I you know they just need so much 
um, hand holding. So that's why we need to mentor them. So that's why I really wanted to implore and just you know share with you. And I hope that you know one of these days I'll get to meet you at one of the events we do, or I'll come here and work with you to empower our youth. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you Although she's in a rush, I'm sure she can take a few questions. So this is the opportunity to raise those questions with her. Any, any questions? Billy. 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 Now it varies from time to time, but it's just most of the things they want is sometimes to understand what you're doing in terms of your career journey, so they know whether they need to end back on that. So it's not, I can't really emphasize exactly how much, but what we do say is that you don't mentor more than two people in six months. And the onus is on the mentee to reach out. So what could it be over the phone? Or? It's over the phone, it's through email. It's not, you don't physically meet with them, it's just through email. A lot of the things they might need is, okay, can you get me work experience? You're finding something for them. Or help them with their CV. Or they have an interview and they just want you to go through a mock interview with them on the phone. Or maybe they, they're just studying, um, they don't know what to do. So you might need to advise them, maybe somebody who's interested in finance. Don't go and do accounting, which will box you up. Maybe do something like mathematics, which is a bit broader, or economics. And by the time they've gone through it, so it's just somebody that they can just talk to in the area of career. And that's all it is, really. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, just following on from um, the cousin's um, question. It is, how do, you, how do you monitor the consistency of mentoring or advice given to the kids? So, so, so in other words, I, I, I'm trying to suggest that do you have um, a sort of framework that every mentor, since we're all coming from different backgrounds, and we're saying more or less the same thing, we, we, well, with, with a little bit of difference in the based on our experiences, but is there a, a, a structure you could give to everyone so mentoring this kids? Yeah. Bearing in mind that we just started this year, so it's obviously, um, you know, we can find two things, but there's a yeah. structure. So every mentor gets a set of rules, role, the role of the mentor. Okay. And there's a level, minimum level that we expect. But when the mentee is coming, they don't, we don't just match them directly with the mentor. We find out exactly what they want. Because some people are just wanting a relationship, and that's not what we're there for. Ours is just to get you to the next level. And we don't have indefinite mentors. So if you want to become, if somebody is just in A levels and they want to become a doctor, we would only, the next level is for them to get the grades and how to get mentored. So once we've done that, we've finished. If they want something else, they come and log it in. So one objective for a mentee. So there's a clear objective that that person wants to achieve. And we work with them on that. And it's got to be an objective that will be achieved within three to six months. And that's how we monitor it. So when they get that outcome. But if the mentee, because it's two ways. The mentors, we've had mentors that have given so much of their time. And they're chasing the mentee, but because they're not really matured enough, they, they're just not really ready for it, and we would not push. Um, depend, but we try and not take them less when they're, they're. Our youngest is 16, basically. We start from 16. So just GCSE? Yes, and we have matured people, so there's some of the my men, if I don't have a young mentee, I pass them to some other um, young graduates. So we've got some graduates that have just qualified the last five years. They're doing really well and they probably would be better mentoring a 16 year old. So most of my mentees are over 40, you know, and I'm just thinking why are they at this level? And I'm working with them just to move and I have quite a few successful stories from that. Question? Considering the fact that obviously we have a lot of young people and they're all over the place. How do you get your mentees? I mean, how do you reach out to the young people and actually make sure that you're effective and efficient, that you're getting the right people that actually need the assistance? I mean, and so what are your strategies? Well, we're built, that's why I'm speaking here. Mm -hmm. but, um, 
most importantly, like the Meet Your Mentor, we do that in the university campus and we do a lot of promotion and I'm very noisy on social media and we use referrals, you know, that way. In most cases, it's the parents that might reach out to us. Um, or I don't just, and then I talk, I have a lot of speaking engagements, so I'm speaking in a lot of churches, a lot of public events, and that's where, that's my call, as many as I can reach, and hopefully you spread the news too. <laughs> What's the fee structure like? Or is it Sorry? is there a fee involved? No. It's free it's for the yeah. for the okay. We, uh, we don't charge anything. But we have our events. Oh. Okay. Because when I did my first one, I was targeting the youth, but I ended up with a lot of mature people. And sometimes the young ones will register when it's free and not show up. So we do put like a five pounds or ten pounds there. But when they come they get the foods, they get it's really nothing, but we don't charge for the mentoring. I don't charge anything for that. And the mentors don't get anything either? Well, we're working on that. That's the next goal we have for next year. The mentors don't get anything at the moment, but I'm hoping to be able to get somebody, you know, funders. Maybe you guys can come and sponsor us. <laughs> you can sponsor us. And maybe, maybe what we can do is when I do my ball, like now, you know, you come and be treated, and you know, we just treat you very nice. But in terms of payment, when I don't really want any money <laughs> to exchange in hands, but you know, yeah. The way we're set up, we're set up like a social enterprise. So eventually, I might access grants, but the grants wouldn't really pay people; they pay for the venue or things like that. Yeah. And you're talking about, you said you have two or three events a year? Two, right? yeah. Two events. Yeah. What are they, what's the format of these? Okay, so Meet Your Mentor is where uh, we have a panel discussion. We kick off with a, pa with a panel discussion of professionals. And then they break out to um, a, men a mentor to two or three people in the same kind of field or interest. Mm -hmm. And they break out and have a discussion. Then you come back again and take general questions. That's the format for Meet Your Mentor. The one I have tomorrow is where we're all glammed up, and that is just for us to just celebrate the successes of the year. It's really a networking forum for professionals. But then I always, so I, the event's about for 200 people, but I always leave 25 spaces for the young ones to inspire them. So they see all the aunties and uncles come all dressed up. They come dressed up, and then on the table they're mingled with professionals and they leave there feeling really inspired. So last year I had a young person who, I only graduated in about, was it two or three years? Was a trader on the stock exchange. So he, you know, very young. Obviously, he's yet to know understand his money from what he was saying. But being young like that, only 60,000, just graduating after two years, that inspired a lot of the young ones. And this time around, I have a very leading professional coming to inspire us. Then we'll just have a networking game. So that's the one tomorrow. That's really very, just to network.